Good morning. Again, does anyone have a testimony uh, they'd like to share? I want to thank the Lord for the opportunity to be in his house this morning to worship. Um, thank him for his mercy and his grace that he's given me uh, through the blood of his son Jesus. I'm thankful that we can come here freely, that um, we have that opportunity, and that God has blessed us even though we're in a time of a lot of questions, um, you know, concerning the prices of things, um, sickness, different things that are going on. We know that God is with us, and I'm just thankful for the peace that he has given me today. Amen. Well, I love the Lord. I'm thankful to be here. thankful for all the blessings he's given us. I ask that he continue to be with this church and shower us his grace upon him. Just thankful for the opportunity to, to, to uh, gather, whether it be ten or a thousand. Amen. Mm -hmm. So many places we don't have that opportunity. We're standing on his promises today. Yes, we are. He is good and he is faithful. He's our healer, he's our restorer. Amen. So it's a wonderful day, and uh, we're saddened that uh, the Haney's and Miss Carolyn uh, can't be here this morning, but we know that God's looking after them. I'm thankful for all the, those who are here today, and just pray for those who can't that they'll be better soon and be back with us. <laughs> um, the Lord has a uh, has asked me to talk a little bit about attention. Um, so that's that's what I'm going to talk about this morning. Yeah, if you want to, go ahead and turn to Genesis chapter 3. And we'll just be starting in verse 1. Um, and as you turn, I uh, ask that you just listen. Um, today's world is all about attention. Um, we think of things like social media. Almost everyone is on social media now. And uh, social media is largely used to gain attention. There are some people, um, their job, their career is to be a social media influencer. And um, there are news sources. They race to be the first to report a story. They want that attention. They want people to say, hey, look, uh, we are the first. We got you the facts. We're reliable. We're trustworthy. Um, people often attract attention to themselves through various means. And um, attention is not necessarily a bad thing. It's good to pay attention. Like maybe we're in a work meeting or maybe we're in a classroom at school. Um, you know, it's important to pay attention to, to the right appropriate things. But um, there are also bad aspects to attention. Some people want to seek personal attention. Um, they have selfish desires. And... Um, they want clicks, they want subscribers, they want people to, to focus on them, they want all eyes to be on them. And that's not how God has called us to live our lives. So, so today, let's just look um, here in Genesis chapter 3. Uh, really, <coughs> what is this all about? What, is, um, what role does attention play? And, and uh, at first... It may not seem like this has anything to do with attention, but I'm going to shoe in here what I see here. Uh, Genesis chapter 3, starting at verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, that your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, 
and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam, and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee, that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to me, to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent, the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of the, thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. Uh, that's 19 verses there, that's a lot to take in. Uh, first thing I'd like to focus on here is deception. Satan lied to Eve. Um, he wanted to lure her attention away from God and, and toward him. He tries to do the same to us. And that's, how, um, that's what Satan does today. He takes things in the world, maybe things that seem harmless, and he uses it to turn our focus away from God. Satan uses uh, innocent things in this world, and he turns them into things for his purposes. He turns them into things to distract us from what's good and what's right and what God has called us to do. Um, I know a lot of the times uh, in, in school, maybe like assemblies, Things like that, um, they would call us in and they would tell us, you know, average screen time is this number of hours, and and they would say, you know, you shouldn't be on your phone so much. You should be going out and, and doing other things. And um, I think the purpose they were trying to, to get there was, sure, being on your phone isn't bad, but when you're on it so much, that there are, um, there are, there are consequences, there are repercussions for that. And um, uh, anything in life can be like that, not just being on your phone or, or not just like playing online games or watching TV or um, being out <coughs> all, all night instead of being at home. Any, anything you do, if, uh, if you do it too much, if you put all your attention, all your focus in that, can lead you astray from God. Um, 1 Peter 5.8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may, he may devour. The devil is still trying to deceive us. He's still trying to lead us astray from God. And he's going to use whatever whatever means, whatever power that he can find. And, and so I'm not here saying, you know, delete all the social media off your phone or like never go out and do something um, by yourself or, you know, never watch TV. I'm not trying to say that. I'm just saying don't let things of this world distract you or take your attention away from God and what God has called you to do. Um, also, note that lies are destructive. We must not lie, especially when doing so can lead others into sin and temptation. The devil here, he lied to Eve, and um, Eve listened to him, and she and Adam ended up sinning. Um, just from listening to what he said, doing things um, that, are, that are destructive based on a lie. And, and the same is true for us. We can be led astray by other people, so we need to be careful who we listen to, um, who we give our attention to, but also we don't need to be that person who is spreading the lies and causing others to fall 
into to pits of despair or fall into um, sinful traps. Um, we must not let the lies of others distract us from God's calling. God is holy and truthful, and when our focus is on him, we'll be prepared to overcome evil. God was honest and upfront with Adam and Eve. He told them, um, you know, your, your purpose here on, on earth, you're to be caretakers of this garden and um, watch over the plants and the animals, um, but you're not supposed to eat of this tree. And he, and he told them exactly everything that they needed to do, and yet they were so focused on what the, the devil told them, what Satan told them. They po focused their attention because they saw this new information. They saw something they thought was good for them and um, would further their status. And because they turned their attention away from Christ, um, it led them to sin. And that's what leads us to sin. We turn our attention away from Christ. Uh, next thing I'd like to focus on is blame. Adam blamed Eve for his sin and Eve blamed Satan. The blame game tears relationships apart by ignoring an issue or pretending that one is powerless to solve it. Um, when God asked them, why did you do this? Adam said, well, it, it was Eve's fault. And then Eve said, well, Satan told me. You know, Satan lied to me. It was his fault. And yeah, Satan did lie, but um, we need to own up to the mistakes that we make. Sometimes um, when we blame people, we're trying to avoid attention. We're not trying to attract attention, like um, like I've been saying previously. We're trying to avoid attention. Avoiding attention can also be bad. And again, it's not a thing where um, I'm just going to stay over here in my little corner because I don't want to get involved in, in this situation. That's not what I'm saying is bad. What I'm saying is, if you did something bad, if your personal actions have consequences, and you try to push them on someone else, and you try to turn all the attention in everyone else's eyes onto them, and make them the villain, that is wrong. Because what you're doing is you're putting a burden on someone else who is not guilty. Um, you're putting, you're pinning that blame on them, and they have to, to suffer the consequences of your actions. That is sinful. It is selfish to make someone else endure the consequences of your actions. Whether or not the spotlight is on us, we should be humble, respectful, and obedient to God. So whether you have attention or you do not have attention, your actions need to be the same. They need to be humble, they need to be loving, and they need to be in accordance with God's will. God knew. God knew what Adam and Eve had done because he knows everything. We always have God's attention. And um, just thinking about that, it's a little bit scary because there's nothing we can hide from God. Um, I know a lot of people don't want to surrender to Christ because they say, I've done too many bad things. Well, you, you've done a lot, and, and God knows what you've done. But I've done a lot, and God knows what I've done. And every person in this room has done something wrong, and God knows that. But he's loving, and he's willing to forgive. God is perfect and blameless. He knows all of our sins. We cannot hide them. Uh, but God is loving and merciful. There's a punishment for evil, but there's a path to salvation. Jesus knew he'd be rejected, tortured, and crucified, but he willingly laid down his life for us. Because he loves us, and he wants that relationship to be restored. He wants our attention. Jesus loves it um, when we turn our attention to him and when we do the things that he's commanded. We're all sinful and deserving of hell, but God provides life to those who believe. John 3.16, probably the most quoted Bible verse there is. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God knew what we did. God knows that we've fallen short. And God knows that we have sinned. But he provided a way for us. So, as it says in John 3.16, believe. Throughout history, God's people have gained the attention of others for their beliefs. Ancient empires sought to conquer and even exterminate the Israelites. Um, think of the Babylonians when they led the Israelites into exile. Or the Romans. Um, the Romans took over the area and um, the Israelites were their subjects. Early Christians, they were martyred or exiled. Um, I believe it says in the Fox Book of Martyrs that 11 of the 12 disciples were, um, excuse me, the 12 after Judas, because they replaced Judas, um, they were all martyred except John. John was the only one, and he was exiled to the island of Patmos, where he wrote the book of Revelation. Um, so that's over 90% of the, the disciples 
over 90%. And think of people like Paul. Paul wasn't um, one of the 12, but he was an apostle. And Paul was um, subject to all sorts of things like floggings, imprisonments, mock trials. And um, Paul was uh, even martyred. So the early church, they went through a lot. The tension of the world was on them. And um, people didn't like them, so it was negative attention. Um, even today, there, there's some negative attention. Think of things that Christians around the world have to go through. And that's why, um, that's why it's extra important for us to be thankful and to remind each other, remind ourselves, and to give God the glory that we live in the United States of America, that we can come here and worship, and that we don't have to worry about being arrested or killed simply because we're Christians. Um, some are jealous of us and others mock, but we shouldn't back down from the world's gaze. Like I said, um, the early church, the world had a negative view upon them, uh, probably up until Constantine made Christianity the official religion of Rome. And even then, there are still people who hated the Christians. And now we, we live in a world, um, the Western world is probably dominated by Christianity or people who call themselves Christians. And, and so it may seem like there's a more positive light on us, but that doesn't mean um, that we just stop caring. It means now more than ever, we need to utilize that attention we've been given. Positive or negative, we need to utilize the gaze of the people of this world, people looking at us, and we need to be positive examples. Paul says we need to be ambassadors for Christ. Um, we should not merely um, proclaim ourselves to be Christians, though, just because of attention. Doing that is also wrong. If, if, if you call yourself a Christian, you need to live the Christian life. You need to do the things that God has commanded and called you to do, and not just slap on the title because you want people to like you, or you want people to respect you, or just for the attention of it. Um, about a month ago, I, I preached a message, and I said, a lot of people, um, they go to church every Sunday because they think it's just a cultural thing. Going to church on Sunday, um, my grandparents, my parents did it, my grandparents did it, their parents did it. It's just a thing that we do now. It's a thing I have to do every Sunday. That's not the attitude we need to take. We need to take the attitude of it's a blessing and privilege to come to church. Amen. And um, when we come to church, that's that's not the only time, but it is a major time that we can put all of our focus, all of our attention on God. And we need to block out the things of this world, the stresses and the worries and the sins. Um, we need to come and we need to worship him and we need to, um, to get our hearts and minds right with him. We should walk the straight and narrow and let our actions and words give honor and glory to Christ because we're no longer to live for ourselves. Love. God knows us and he loves and cares for us. Uh, if you will turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Let me read that again. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Um, I have this verse, it's a little bit faded now, but it's on the front of my sermon book. And um, I believe this version of, of the verse says that God's plans are to prosper you and to give you um, hope for your future. God knew what you did, and we have his attention at all times. Nothing, nothing we were, we're doing is escaping him. But he loves us enough that even in spite of the things we've done, he still thinks good thoughts towards us. And he still has um, great plans for us. He has hope for us, and he wants us to know that we have a good future ahead. Um, again, though, we can't just take that and say, oh, uh, God, God loves me for who I am. Um, I can just do whatever I want. No, uh, you, you still need to turn your life to Christ and, and focus on the things you've been called to do. But it means we don't have to, to be scared. We don't have to worry. Um, 
even though we have God's attention, even though we have the attention of the world, um, we're going to mess up, and uh, there will be consequences for that. But we know that there's a happy ending to this story, and that is that Christ has already won the victory. We can take comfort in knowing that God is looking out for us, um, and just like Christ loves us, we need to love others too. That is one of the commandments that Jesus gave us. When we love like Jesus, we get the world's attention. Um, it's not natural for people to love pe others who do damage to them. It's not natural for someone who has stolen from someone, or someone who has killed a loved one, or someone uh, who has tarnished your reputation. It's not natural for you to forgive them. It's not natural for you to love them and to put those things in the past. Because the world is very self-centered. The world is very selfish and has an attitude of let's get even. So when you do things like you love like Jesus and when you forgive, people will take notice. Love is an excellent tool for witnessing, preaching, and helping the lost find Christ. So, like I, I've said here, it's an excellent tool. If you have a tool, let's say you're working on a project. I work at a hardware store, so I have people come in all the time and they're asking for tools. I'm going to be honest, I don't know what half of them are, what they do. Um, I'm still learning. but. If you have a tool, and you know it works, and you know you need it for a project, are you going to leave that in your toolbox? Are you going to leave that in the shed or in the garage? Are you going to find some substitute that you think might do the job um, almost as good, but not quite? No, you wouldn't. You would use that tool. You would use it because it's great, and you know it works. Well, let me tell you something, folks. Love is that tool, and you don't need to leave love in your back pocket. You need to take love with you everywhere and show it to others. And again, love isn't, I see sin, and I'm going to ignore it. Um, uh, I love you just the way you are. There's no need for you to change. No, sometimes love means you have to go up to someone and say, um, privately and respectfully, what you did is wrong. This is what God said you need to do. This is how you can fix it. And, and a lot of people don't like that because they don't want to be corrected. But that is loving your neighbor. That is doing what Christ has commanded you to do, even if they don't like it. That's still showing them that you care about them and you want what's best for them. You want their life to be in line for Christ just as, like, just as much as you want your life to be in line with Christ. So um, as I wrap this up in closing, uh, just consider maybe you're lost today or you're lonely or afraid. God is watching and he is listening. Like I said earlier, that might be scary, but that's okay because he's provided a way for you to find forgiveness and salvation and eternal life through Jesus Christ, his son. He's ready for you to give your heart to him. He hears your prayers. Your attention, um, excuse me, God's attention is on you. He's paying attention. He's not ignoring your prayers. He hears them. He knows your thoughts. So come to the altar this morning. Or if, if you're watching this at home, just find somewhere, a quiet place to pray. Give God your full attention. Come to him. Find love and peace that this world cannot offer. Thank you, church. May God bless you. And as you go out this week, just remember to give your attention to God and let other people's attention on you turn you into a witness, an example for Christ, someone who will sow the seeds, someone who will water the seeds, someone who will grow the church. God bless. Amen. Amen.